No that's shit. Just how cats were. They're cunty little bastards filled with cunty uh, <laughs> pudding. I don't know, whatever it is. Cunty custard. It's a very weird way of putting it. Uh, Jason Bateman directed the first two episodes of The Outsider. Really? Yeah. Interesting. He must have really liked that Ozarks thing. Did he direct uh, parts of that? or? Is yeah. It... Huh. I want to say he did, like, not the f- first full season, but he did a bunch. I didn't know that he uh, did any type of uh, directing. I think he even did some directing on uh, uh, Rest of Development. Hmm. I suppose that makes sense. A lot of actors do that. Yeah. On their own shows. Yeah. Also director and executive producer on... uh, On Ozark as well. What if it tells me... First two episodes of season one. He directed. Cool. And he did the last two of season one... Looks like he did first two season the two first first two episodes of season two too. Also, cool. fucking, that fucking guy, Teen Wolf two over here directing shit. Gross. <laughs> Speaking of gross, comes naturally. We are Joe. Joe's backpack. Cody. Mike's not here today. He's in uh, San Diego on a eating chili peppers. Yep. You motherfucker sent me that picture I was like ooh Send us, yeah I know that motherfucker you better bring back yeah. a burrito and some of that sweet sweet sauce so angry at him right whatever he can enjoy his vacation in San Diego we'll have fun here in Arizona yeah so fun in Arizona yep knowing we have to work sometime in the next day or so whatever anyhow not bitter at all no, not whatsoever. You know, I've only worked like I'll only work like three times this week, because I just came off of a small vacation myself. Yeah, but you didn't go anywhere. I honestly didn't go anywhere. That was a weird place to go to, the Great Wolf Lodge. Did you stay there? Or did you guys go to the little, um, uh, the water park? Yeah, the, the water, water park, park stuff. So yeah. the original plan was it was a yeah, it is part of my niece's birthday present for next year I think for this this year and also for my mom's birthday from last year so basically my sister bought a hotel room for her family and a hotel room for our family and the whole idea was that uh, yeah we were supposed to stay the night uh, somebody told me the wrong days to take off <laughs> again so I took off the 4th and the 5th it turns out it was the 5th and the 6th that I was supposed to take off and uh, yeah, so I I was only there for one day on uh, on Sunday. It it's really it's really cool. Yeah, but it's really small. Yeah, we so I didn't know they had built one because mm-hmm. I don't ever go to that part of Scottsdale ever, uh, even mm-hmm. when I worked out there. Um, and when Mike and I were going to Mike Jen and I were going to the wrestling thing out there, we went to um, the one of those fucking all you can eat bowl restaurant things, you know, mm-hmm. what are they? The, not Korean barbecue. The other one, Mongolian barbecue. Mongolian bar- okay. Yeah. Uh, which it, I don't know why it didn't dawn on me. They used to use those giant Evo like cooktops. Yeah. I don't know why it never dawned on me that it's exactly what that is. Anyways. So when it's the strip mall that that's in is right next to. Yeah. Well, not right next to it's, well, I guess it is kind of right next to it, but there's, there's a Mambo's like, there. Yeah, yeah, that's where we went to eat. Yeah. on uh, Sunday night. Yeah. yeah, so that's on one end, and then the the Mongolian barbecue is on the other end of that yeah. strip mall. Yeah, so I saw it and I was like, "Huh, I didn't know they had one here in Arizona." And I just found out is it just literally opened. just got it literally just uh, got opened in September. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, "Oh, okay." And I guess they just opened the whole you can go and do the water park thing for limited tickets without having to stay at the hotel. That but I don't know. Literally about just because, started the the beginning of this year, so you can now. Yeah, I think it's just which makes sense. Yeah, so basically the whole idea is, um, or not the, the 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 rule I guess is they'll they have a certain amount of tickets that'll be available, mm-hmm. 
depending on how many rooms are booked for that day. And it makes sense. Yeah. Because you, you buy a hotel room and you get, I think, four tickets is what we got. Yeah. So, depending on the room. Okay. Depending on, yeah. Probably depending on the room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really interesting. You can t- definitely tell it's more like it's like very Disney and uh, yeah. Universal Studios uh, inspired. You you walk in there and they have these like little experiences uh, that that uh, that you can do. So like they have like the and what I mean by experiences, they have like the uh, they sell these wands that are literally just a rip off of Harry Potter wands from <laughs> from uh, Universal Studios. That's weird. Uh, and they have these little things that you can walk around. And I didn't really see any kids doing it. Uh, but these things that you can walk up to and, you know, wand at. <laughs> and it's supposed to do stuff. Wand at. Uh, they have, like, an arcade inside there. They had a Dunkin' Donuts inside there. They had a Ben & Jerry's inside there. What? Uh, well, yeah. They have a Ben & Jerry's in there? Can they we go ben there without Jerry's going there. to the hotel? I think you actually can because it, so you walk in and obviously you're in the, uh, the, uh, the hotel's lobby. Yeah. And on the right hand side is the actual check-in stuff. Left hand side is their souvenir gift shop. And if you just go straight past that, uh, on the left side, that's where you walk into all that stuff. Ooh. So you literally have Dunkin' Donuts and right on the opposite side of Dunkin' Donuts is the Ben and Jerry's. Is it a full size Ben and Jerry's, you know? Not like, a, like, not like the one out in fucking wherever it's at, but. It looked like a. I mean, because I've been in. I've been at the Ben and Jerry's over in uh, Universal Studios, the City Walk. Okay. So it's like that. That's like that one. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that one. Uh, you know, then they had an arcade in there, and they had other like little gift shops and stuff like that that you can buy from. So if you, oops, I forgot like flip flops or swim shoes or a swimming shorts, you know, trucks, trunks, whatever you call them. Yeah. You know, you can buy all that stuff there. They had a rock climbing wall on the inside. Uh, they had like a jungle gym type thing that you could uh, walk around in, like pretty legit stuff. Hmm. You know, tight rope walk. They like they literally had it's it's all made for kids, by the way. So yeah. don't just like go running in there just being like, ah, I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm as an adult. adult at a theme park. Yeah. It's really all it's all all of it. Even the water park stuff is just all aimed towards kids. So there is some fun to be had, but don't just like think you're gonna go spend a whole day there gotcha. type doing type stuff. But it's like legit stuff. Like I was saying, the uh, the treehouse thing, you they legit like put on climbing harnesses onto the kids, and they they hook them up via ropes, and so the kids are like you know twenty feet in the air, walking on a tightrope, you know type stuff. Gotcha. So it's, it's pretty legit stuff for kids. Um, and then they have like an area for like they called it story time. So like even littler kids can sit down and and get told a story on this giant TV in the. Uh, yeah, I saw pictures of that, and I was like, "It's a water park. Why? What are they doing?" But I guess but if you're because, staying there, yeah, if you're staying there. But like I said, they're trying to they're trying to capture that like kind of Universal and Disney type thing, but with their own characters. Uh, it's cool too. Everything is done by by the wristband. So you have you you put on the wristband. Oh yeah, and you have to scan your hotel yeah. uh, door. You uh, put your credit card on there, so it activates. You know, so if you want to buy, oh, it's very anything, Disney Worldish. Yeah, then, exactly. Yeah. So okay. you just scan your your uh, wrist. You can pay for anything. Uh, so yeah, so that was that right there. The hotel rooms are they're brand new, so they're fucking nice, like huge hotel rooms. Gotcha. Uh, really nice, done, nicely done. And the water park, like I said, it's it's very much intended for kids. But the slides are really fun. They only had, uh, let me think, one, two, three, six slides there. Wow, I uh, wouldn't have thought that many. Yeah, right? Because it's not look big enough. It doesn't, but the, you, you don't realize that the slides actually go outside the building. So it's really weird to, yeah. to go in. Like so I saw the yellowing, the yellow stuff, and I, or the yellow pipes, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Except for, like, I don't know if anyone thought during the summertime, probably not the best idea. I mean, it's all running through water, so it's, yeah, not, it's, true. it's not so bad. Uh, but no, it's air conditioned. Well, so, I fucking hope so. So the inside, like all the water on the inside, is warm. So it's obviously, yeah, it's obviously temperature controlled water on the inside, yeah. and it's all air conditioned. So it's fucking warm in there right now. Well, yeah, of it course, was yeah, super nice in there being cold outside. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be all frigid in there right now. No, getting uh, everyone the flu as they leave. Yeah. Oh my god, they have a small wave pool in there. It only went to like five feet uh, deep, so it wasn't very deep. So you got to your knees. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and then they had a little kitty area and then uh, for like little slides and stuff like that. And then it had another like little pool area on the inside. And then they, even they had more, another uh, big pool on the outside that we went to and that uh, a little uh, jacuzzi out there as well that we sat in for a little while. So all in all, like it was fun to do. I, it's not like something I would do as, you know, ooh, I'm an Arizona resident. I'm going to do this for fun type thing. Yeah. You know, I'd rather you gave me the choice of going there or like uh, is Sunsplash still a thing? Wet and Wild? I don't know. Is that the one out in Mesa? There's one out in Mesa and there's one out. The Sunsplash used to be that way. <laughs> way to point. Way to point. Uh, just past the mountains. Uh, so you take the 101 uh, around uh, going north and take it around and just past the mountains on your left is right where a Sunsplash used to be. If, okay. if it's still out there, it probably is out there. I don't even know what that city's called. And then, yeah, then uh, the one in Mesa or one out towards Mesa is uh, wet and wild. So I'd rather go to those ones. They're obviously bigger slides, bigger, you know, uh, wave pool, probably a lot more stuff to do. But, I mean, it, it was it was fun for what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if... I did like that shirt, though. I thought that shirt that I, that I took a picture of and said yeah, you guys was pretty, pretty fucking funny. hilarious. Yeah. I uh, I don't know when you sent that it was it was funny because I was like, why would why would Joe go there? I was like, then I was like, oh wait, no Scottsdale. I was like, because normally if you're like, there? yeah, but if you're normally if you're going somewhere, you usually tell us like, oh, I'm you know going wherever you know with my yeah. family or whatever. But I was like, why wouldn't you tell us he's going to fucking this place? And then you said Scott in Scottsdale. I was like. Yeah, it wasn't like a. Oh, a he big didn't go trip like. Or yeah, I was like, like okay. That. But it worked out it as well. The I ended up going to a Coyotes game on the fourth as well. Oh, I forgot. I meant to text uh, Sergio. I think he was there on the ice. Oh really? Because it was uh, first responders night. Oh okay. And they did the whole. Uh, you know, they they had they unfurled the flag and they you know did the national anthem and they're walking off the ice and I'm sitting there and I'm like. That fucking Sergio down there, hmm. and I was gonna text, and I I figured I'd I'd wait till the for the period to end, and uh, I totally forgot. So that would be interesting if that was that would be funny if that were Sergio down there. Um, I'll text him right now and find out. Do it, do it now. Anyway, so that was my experience at the uh, the Great Wolf Lodge. I think it's the first one that's on this side. Apparently, it's like a it's a popular thing on the east side of the United States. And this, I think, is one of the first ones on the west side of the United States. I think, yeah, and there might be one in Northern California. There, probably, there might be, yeah. But yeah, it's the first. I know it's the first one in Arizona too. First one, definitely in Arizona. Anyway, what else we got to talk about today? Well, since Mister, I don't watch any goddamn. Uh, television shows isn't here today, right? Uh, it's I not figured mad about you or yeah, uh, uh, it's always sunny. So we can talk about television programs, yeah, new, new television, new television programs. programs, not just fucking new old streaming ones. programs yeah. as well. Uh, did we decide which three? Are we going to talk just Watchmen, Witcher, and Expanse? Unless there's more that you can think of, but those are the main ones that, that's what I, that we I thought about. we would have talked about yeah. right now. But yeah, because my we've talked about a little bit of the Watchmen, here, a little bit of Watchmen, a little bit of the Witcher type thing. Uh, Mike was trying to get into the Witcher. I don't even know how many episodes he got into it. I think he said two. Last I want to say it was two. They talked. He was, uh, it bothers me a little bit that he said it was boring, but I can understand a little bit what he means. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it, it. There's definitely scenes where it's like it's more setting up characters and yeah, and stuff. it's stuff that plays off later on, especially those first early like the first three episodes, because like you meet these characters and all of a sudden like you meet them again, and they're young. You're like, what the fuck is happening? I yeah. get it. You and I have the advantage of we read the books. I'd almost say that's a disadvantage. In a way, yes, because there's a lot of stuff we want to happen that doesn't happen. Well, there's that, but the the. The one complaint that I have, and a lot of the other people have uh, complained about as well, is just 
how the story was presented to you. And it was the, uh, the storylines were running side by side each other in every episode. So as a person just watching the show, it's like, okay, these must be happening at the same time. But as a person that's read the book, it's like, these can't be happening at the same time because that would mean that, that, because the first time that Yennefer meets Geralt is she's like 98 years old. That's the first time that they meet. Yeah. But in the first couple of episodes, she's literally just starting out as becoming a sorceress. So it's yeah. like, it doesn't make sense. I, okay. I can give it to them if they're, if they're playing around with the timelines a little bit, changing things up a little bit. But then at the same time, you're already introducing Siri when Geralt hasn't even made it to uh, Sintra yet to make that uh, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, the the uh, um, uh, something surprise. Child surprise. Well, it ended up being child surprise. Your child yeah, surprise. Law uh, surprise. Law surprise. Yeah. Law surprise. Real quick, what yep. Kaidu's game was it? It was on the. Uh, it was versus the Philadelphia Flyers. So it was on the fourth. It was Saturday. Um, he's he texted me back right now, so I'm asking if he was there. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that was a little bit confusing as a person that has read the books. I wasn't sure what the hell that they were doing. And obviously it wasn't until like episode six that I like, okay, they're, they're definitely different time periods. Uh, so it made more sense to me. Uh, but as a person that had never read the books, in one way, I think it'd be a lot nicer to watch it and just suddenly have that reveal of like, oh, these are different timelines type things because you're not worrying about, you're not wondering about the whole time uh, when these things are taking place, yeah. if they're taking place concurrently or anything. You're just watching and trying to enjoy the show, and then you're realizing later, oh, these are three different timelines that are happening. At the same time, though, uh, I lost my train of thought. There was so much to go. The, the what you're 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 getting at was the enjoy or would you enjoy it more or less if you read the books or not? Yeah. And you were saying because of the, I don't want to say, time, well, it's the time jumps, but basically it's going back and forth. Um, yeah. So like a person that hasn't read the books might enjoy it more, uh, just the show itself as it's presented. Uh, because you're not wondering where this stuff takes place in time or if yeah. people are fucking with the timeline. And then, you, yeah, so you have that uh, that cool reveal. And there's little things here and there that you will that you can catch. Uh, like the uh, when Geralt fights the Strigger. Yeah. And then, you know, you get that backstory of the kids. And, you know, you, you're actually shown, like, a portrait of those kids. Yeah. And then, like, in the next episode, I think it was, you have... Uh, uh, Jennifer's uh, plot line, I think it is, and you see those kids in the background at the dance. Yeah, and you're like, oh shit, that dance happened years ago. This trigger thing happens years. Oh, so this is yeah. You're you're definitely getting those hints of like, okay, this is definitely different timelines going yep. on. Yeah, at the same, uh, but it's being presented at the same time. Yeah, because that's the thing is like, what's weird about the, when they give you Jennifer's origin as a sorceress. It's at the same time Geralt's, you know, one of the only active witchers and surviving witchers. Yeah. And you, to me, I was like, uh, no, because he hasn't been born yet. Yeah. Like, at that point, she's like almost 20. Yeah. And she, I was like, and then like it dawned on me, like, because they even talk about how in that episode, they're going to she's basically slotted to go to um the the evil kingdom well wasn't well, evil it wasn't at the time. evil at the time it was a backwater country essentially yeah. at the time uh, nilfgaard nilfgaard yeah and so they you're like wait a minute no nilfgaard's this terrifying fucking powerhouse force that that in the first episode is destroyed Sintra. Like yeah, that's where we like, started like it's what? already taken like a good third of the continent yeah and i was like Oh, oh, I see what we're doing. Yeah. We're that's... giving you Yennefer's backstory before we give Yennefer to Geralt in the main yes. 
I was like, okay. Because, I mean, if you read The Last Wish, which is the first, air quotes, first yeah. collection of, of short stories, which is actually the second set of short stories. Yeah. But they all take place before the Before the actual first, like, main line that yeah. you get into with the whole series situation yeah. and whatnot. Um, anyhow, it, the reading, if you look it up, if you want to read the books, Google or Bing or whoever fucking search in, in the internet, look up um the reading order for the witcher because it is not what you think it is no and there's a very good reddit post like yeah you search that and that's where i found like when i first uh got into it i knew that the uh the books were a little bit out of order because yeah. i've been reading about the history of of the witcher and uh when you search for what order should i read the books in a reddit uh post comes up and this dude gives like a really good in-depth uh spoiler free uh reason why you should read the books in the in this order and then he gives you the order and so that's the order that i've been reading them in so definitely if you're going to read it find that find the order that uh, that you're going to read them in and it's just because you get the really cool short stories uh and and even one of them was actually in the show in the show that i didn't know that he would actually do that they would actually do which was the the dragon one yeah you know i thought that was a really cool cool story from the books and they actually had it in there yeah well, it's because in Last Wish, the first book, air quotes, last the first collection of short stories that you're supposed to read, um, Yennefer is her backstory is not in that. Yeah, her backstory isn't in is only in Blood of Elves, right? Something like that. I can't remember the more. first actual novel. Yeah, um, and that's when you learn that. Uh, oh, it was him. It was him. Yeah. Fuck. Yep, it was there. I wonder where he was sitting where he was uh sitting for the rest of the game. I don't know. Huh. Uh yeah, he just answered back. Yeah, I was the, I was there. It was first responders night. Yeah. And he asked, "Were you there?" I was like, "No, Joe was." Hmm. Um Anyway, uh so getting back to the storylines thing, at least Towards the end, though, it does make sense of why they did it that way. Yeah, because you do have you're literally telling the origin stories of each of of all three characters at the same time because it's all leading to the same point in time in the last two episodes. You'd say, I would say, yeah. So it does make it does make sense if you are kind of on the edge of of you know like Mike. I would definitely suggest him continue to watch it if not for you know the story at least for like how amazing henry cowbill in it is and oh, how so amazing the the vfx are in it how amazing uh just the setting is it's so it. well done it's so well done if you think that the story is a little bit slow to begin with right now it definitely does pick up it definitely does become more interesting uh it's just doing a lot of character development at the beginning for literally probably the first six episodes, and there's only eight episodes in the season. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of action strung without, but it definitely is very character, uh, you know, setting up this character for the general mass audiences. Because this yeah. isn't like Superman, this isn't like Batman, this isn't like a character that everybody knows. Yeah. This is definitely somebody that you have to set up who they are. Yeah, because I think with... And I read something about it in the uh, Get Your Opinion... Um, but it's the first season is like you said, it's just trying to get these three characters established enough where you'll understand where it's going from there. Mm. The weird thing to me, and this is what I was going to bring up to you about the article I read is do you think in season two, they'll do the hunt for Yennefer and introduce Triss? Well, they've already introduced Triss. Well, like fully into the show. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, you'd meet her in there, but... I hope so. Okay. Um, well, so you played I, Witcher 3. Yeah, I played The Witcher 3 all the way through. Okay. I guess that question doesn't really apply. But that question doesn't really apply because The Witcher 3 doesn't take place within The Witcher... It, it's within The Witcher universe, yeah. but I already know what happens to Geralt by the end of the book series. And okay. The Witcher 3 is... Is its own thing. It just, yeah. it just went. Oh, it, retcon. Yeah, because twenty years after, right? No, eight. No, it's like eleven years after. How old is How old is uh, Siri in that? 
Oh, she's uh, she's, she's like, a good twenty, 20 mid twenties. Like, yeah, like okay, yeah. So it's like ten, it's like ten or eleven years because she's only like thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. Um, when Geralt meets her, right? Yeah. 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 Um. Uh. It's interesting because I was going to ask is you didn't play Witcher two, so you didn't get the opportunity to pursue the romance with Triss. No, but it does come up in The Witcher Three. Yeah, um, which I thought was weird because, like, I was wondering if the save data would change, and I don't think it does because I don't think it made a difference with mine. Um, it probably doesn't because there was at least in The Witcher Three when you started playing the game, there was a, a whole sequence when you, when you get when you meet the Nilfgaard uh, king for the first time. Yeah, and you have to get the shave and stuff like that. Yeah. They literally have when you when you haven't played the previous games. They literally have, oh, uh, in the battle of such and such, did such and such, did so and so survive? And you have to answer yes or no. Yeah, okay. And so that's filling in those blanks. Yeah. And Triss never showed up in any of those things. So those gotcha. were the only things that okay. that affected your game. I guess that's true. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you ch- if you chose to pursue Triss over Yennefer. No. Because Yennefer's a Yennefer's is a cold-hearted bitch. cunt. She's such a bitch. She is. And definitely, at least in Witcher Three, I know personally it would have been like Triss is a much better person than right. There's so many other God, like so much better uh, romance choices than Yennefer in in, uh, in the Witcher Three. But knowing the the backstory was more like okay, well this is this is the backstory. This is what I'm going to stick to. I'm going to just just go with Yennefer, gotcha. Yeah, you know, uh, and. and that relationship has does have a little bit of a payoff in the end, uh, somewhat because of the fact that uh, you you do uh, they do address the Jin's uh, wish, you know, in The Witcher Three. If you decide to follow that storyline, uh, and you can actually destroy the Jin, which would free the wish that was made by Geralt, uh, and so from there they just are are like okay well we're no longer bound by destiny is this going to relationship going to work and depending on how you play the game it it does you know uh and that's the way i got it or at least that's the way i got it you know they 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 end up do they do end up together with shiri just kind of like you know happily ever after type of thing uh he said he got they gave so after they went down on the ice. They gave him. Uh, they gave him all tickets for a suite up, upstairs. Oh, sweet! So yeah, some sweet. That's cool. I walked by the sweets too, so I probably walked by a sweet again. Probably. <laughs> um. Yeah, like the thing. No, I mean, for anybody who hasn't read the books. Don't expect the show to be like the games because no. the games are loosely based on they're they're telling all different things that happen. It still takes the lore and the history of but like the one big thing that and Joe knows this from playing through uh Witcher 3 is in Witcher 3 Geralt saves Ciri from the castle. Yeah. Where in the books he doesn't meet up until her, like two or three weeks after Sentra has fallen, and she's yeah. she was rescued um, by a, uh, a a lady who found her in the field after yeah. she destroyed those dudes. Dude, seriously, guys are stuck in the tree. Oh my god! god. Um, that little bastard got what he deserved. Seriously, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so like that was cool to see. That was more. I don't want to like all true to the book, but it was interesting because like when you see, I thought they're going to pull a Witcher three. Cause when you see Geralt come out of the catacombs and he's in Centro the time, the, 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 That's the fall, overthrow. The, yeah. And when it's falling, I was like, Oh, so they're going to do what they did. But I know at that point I was like, wait, no, they can't because she's already, she's, she's already gone. Like, technically I, I left. literally saw that three, four episodes. Yeah. She's gone already. So I was like, how's this going to happen? Like he yeah. was there obviously, because in the books he does he does go back at one point when he hears that Sentra's gonna fall he's like I'm here I'm here to take Siri because yeah. that yeah this is my child this is the child surprise I'm yeah. here to claim child surprise yep even though I said I wouldn't I'm 
here to do it. Yeah, he's like, I'm terrified to see what happens if I don't do because this. Because of the whole destiny thing, exactly. Because every time he you're... goes against it, he gets fucked. Fucked. It, and that's the that's the interesting is like, anytime anybody it seems to go against the destiny thing, uh, they end up being fucked. Especially Sintra, because that's literally what pretty much happened there. Um, I will say that 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 was one of the more annoying things about the this the show is literally. Everybody just sitting there saying destiny, 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 yeah. destiny. Everybody They're really hammering that home. Fucking minutes. It was just like hammering that fucking word home. Um, but uh, um, yeah, it was. I I mean I I thoroughly enjoyed the first season and I cannot wait for the the second season and on um what was what was crazy to me though is they did such a good job of giving you little bits from the sh- from the books enough to know where it's going because the only episode really that it's a fucking, fucking Oreo Oreo you know? yeah Jesus Christ um that the only episode that really well, no, there's two. I guess really the yeah, the dragon one was pretty close. But the only one that was like to me that was like the closest to a straight adaptation mm-hmm. was the dance. Was the the when he got the uh, law of surprise. Oh yeah, and he saved the porcupine guy. Yeah, that was the only episode that was like it felt more lifted right from the book. Yeah, like fully on. We adapted this from the book. Yeah. And you're right, like that one in the dragon. One yeah, are really the ones that uh, that felt just straight, just straight adapted from the books. There were some weird things they did in the dragon one that were like odd changes, like the fact that like you see what's his face and the two uh, warrior ladies fall off the cliff. Spoiler, I guess. Really, what it is, I guess I should say, um, because in the in the book, the avalanche happens. But they're not with the group. Yeah, see, I don't remember every detail of that story so much. I just remember the generalness of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, that was really cool. And the fact that there's a baby dragon. Yeah. When in the show, it was just still an egg. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, it's it was cool because if you paid attention to... I mean, and you didn't remember it as well, but when you paid attention... Uh, I had just read... Um, sort of destiny right before season one came out, so I was like, "You're a bit more fresh than there, yeah." Because I that was like last year, well, yeah, the year before last year. And I wasn't going to read it beforehand, other than I heard an interview that they took stuff from both those first two, and I was like, "Shit, I don't." I mean, I, I don't want to be surprised. I I was like, I kind of want to know, like, you want to see more about it, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing, um, for this exact reason, uh, so we can talk about it. Um, but uh, it was. There was little things, and I kind of wish they would have done a better job with it. In the, uh, I mean, I, there was a cool because you see in the in the show you see him and her, the two warriors and him fall because the bridge collapses, um, or not, I don't even like like a little, little ledge thing. Ledge. Is it a? I can't. Is it a bridge technically? It's not technically a bridge. Whatever that little fucking terribly built wooden p- platform goes through, which is funny because like. I say it's going to be built, but it's built by dwarves, and dwarves are smaller. So, like, you know it's so it, probably like, built well, for them. It, it was enough for them, definitely, yeah. because the first group that crossed it were dwarves. And it had no issues, had yeah. No issues with but it. once giant-ass fucking Gerald gets fucking on it. heavier people. Yeah, wearing fucking giant, full armor. Fucking full armor and, and swords and shit. Yeah. But in the, in the book, when, the, when the Avalanche, air quotes, Avalanche happens, the dragon does it. Um, and the, the, rock, the big piece of sheared-off rock comes down and collapses. It breaks the bridge when... Geralt and Yennefer on it um, that it's it's literally reversed mm-hmm. in the book he's holding on while she's dangling from him in the in the show she's up top holding on to him, him and he's, he's dang- dangling yeah okay yeah yeah and um, and that was the, in in that story is the first time that uh, Geralt uses offensive magic mm-hmm because every time else, and it's always been defensive magic. It's always yeah. been a push or a pull or a or something, right? A stun. And this is the first time he actually used it because he created fire yeah. to burn to burn the the, the ropes. Um, 
So I was like, that's interesting that they didn't do that. But I mean, in the situation they set it up as the, the, the cast of that episode needed to be bigger. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting the way they, it was, it was a weird, not like it was bad, but it was like a weird, okay, I see what you did. But like, I kind of wish you got that dick hole dragon scene mm-hmm. from the book that we didn't get in the, in the, um, in the show. Uh, in the show, yeah, but it was still cool. It was I was like, oh, okay, um, and of course you see his dead dragon wife, and I was like, Oof, this is right. You're like, mm, mm, mm. this is all of a sudden I feel bad. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, I feel bad. you shouldn't make me feel bad about this. Stop making me feel things. Um, but yeah, it was cool because the first season was like like both you and I said, it's this way of them setting up the characters to do more things later on. Yeah. Because like they got green lit for a second season before this one even. Yeah. So we're going to get more of this. Yeah. So the reason I brought up, uh, Tris is like, because clearly she's more of a main character after or in the first novel, mm-hmm. uh, blood of blood, of, blood of the elves or elf blood of elves, blood of elves, blood of elves. Yeah. Um, because she is, his companion and she helps train Siri. Yeah. It's, they, yeah. In the book, she, she helps, she helps, but I know in, in like Witcher three as well, they, they make mention of like, she was with him for a while. Like they yeah. were romantically involved for yeah. a little bit. Uh, well, if you chose that, that storyline in two. Well, but I mean, yeah, and, but it, yeah, uh, it happens in the books. That it way. happens in the books, but then yeah, Yennefer is seen or not Yennefer. Um, Chris is seen more as a, uh, even spoken about more as a, like, uh, Sister to Siri, yeah. Towards the end, yeah. Yeah, because in the books, Siri has this weird, like, crush on Geralt. But That's I think she not... sees him more as a father. Figure. Yeah, and it's and it's it's creepy. Um, but it's weird. Like, she's very protective of him. Yeah. Obviously, because like you know, he's training her to be a Witcher, in sent in sorts of ways. Um, he can't technically do it because he can't mutate her, but. He's giving her as much as a human can can trying to can help have. her protect herself. Yeah. At the same time, Yennefer is trying to to help her with her latent magical abilities yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, Without ho- going through the whole transformation, which is graphically shown in the show, which I did not think they were going to do. Okay, so that's a good thing to talk about. How how graphic did you expect this show to I, be? I knew it'd be violent. You know, like. Swords all of like I was not ready for the level of violence no. at all whatsoever. No, that first episode, which is the um, the butcher of Blaviken, the, yeah, the episode, yeah. He's when he fucking murders the shit out of those like ten dudes. Yeah, and the one point he like throws the sword of the one guy. I was like, cool. Then he like mostly decapitates another dude. Mm-hmm. And then the last guy he shoves the sword in and then just like palm thrust the hilt out and it just pops his, the top of his head off. And yeah. I was like, holy shit. Right. But the, even like the battle, um, that they, they, they do, um, before the fall of, um, uh, Sentra when she goes out and they're dropping fucking limbs off. And I was like, Oh, okay. Violence. Violence. Then they forcibly remove Yennefer's womb. Yeah, which I then didn't hold it to over see. a fire and burn it. Did not expect to see that at all. I was like, um, what the fuck? Right? Because like I remember it from the book, and I'm like, okay, it's described. Right. But I never thought I'd see a burning vagina no, or womb. Just... Yeah, on a fucking like television program. Right? Just full in display. God, yeah. That was so weird. I was like, holy shit. Like, they mention, oh, they have to, they, they take certain parts of you because you, like. There's always some give to magic. Yeah, right? Yeah. So they found this way to prolong or to extend the usage of magic without killing yourself. And it's because, and I can't remember the word is used. Basically, if they take the way, take away the giving of life, the magic doesn't take the same toll, blah, 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 whatever. But it's like, yeah, but you, you took her, her, her womb out. out. Yeah, and then you showed it to me, and then you burnt it. Yeah, 
Not in only in front of me. In the most excruciating way possible. Yeah. And the worst part is she gets to feel it. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't like any of this. I was like, what is, what is wrong with you people? Right. Um, yeah, it was, wow. It was, I was, I was blown Surprised away. Surprised by the amount of, of carnage in the show and the visceralness yeah. of, of some of the, uh, the scenes. Uh, and then just the, the straight out, just like, oh yeah, that's, that's just casual nudity. Right exactly. There. Yeah. This first episode, just casual or orgy happening. It happens again like three, four episodes later when you, when you, uh, Geralt meets Yennefer for the first time, and you're just like, that's just a casual orgy going on. Yeah, like when he walks in, because even like the first episode when he goes to meet what's his face in his fucking Heidi Tower, just like na- naked ladies walking around picking weird yeah. plants or weird fruits off whatever that, those trees were. And then I was like, okay, so definitely they're gonna they're gonna embrace the nudity because. Yeah, I mean, at one point there's a city they go to where like the poor just walk around naked, so like that's eventually going to be a thing. But it's like, how much of this are we going to get, right? And I was like, okay, so nudity, they're, they're not even in focus, really. Whatever. He walks in this fucking room, and there's maybe a hundred people. Yeah, just, just poking and sucking and flesh squishing. Yeah, flesh. like it is. I was like, and I love Daniel or well, uh, what they call him in this. Uh, 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 Jessler, Je- Je- Jessler, Je- what is it? Jasker or something like yeah, that. Yeah, whatever it is in Polish, uh, his actual name in Polish, which is translated into apparently dandelion or dandelion. If you just depends, uh, goddamn, yeah. it just irritates me. Yeah, it depends on if you listen to the books or, or played the video game. Yeah, video game, dandelion. No dandelion. Dan- or, yeah, dandelion. The video game is dandelion. Yep. The the uh, the audio books is dandelion. dandelion. Yeah, it's so fucking weird. Anyhow. um... So when you were this and then hit like he's looking around and he's like Oh and like Geralt's just kinda like like this one girl grabs him, Geralt's like whatever, just don't die or whatever, and he's like yeah. lets him go. Cause he's like enthralled in Yennefer because it's the first time he's seeing her. Um, even though she was mentioned once before, uh, by the dude in the creepy tower. Um and he's like, God damn, what's up with this? Right? Right. And you look over and like he's just like He's just like barely moving because yeah. he's like poisoned at yeah, that he's point like, in time. Dying. I want to be it's doing like, things, but uh... I can't. Like, yeah, um, yeah. And, and of course, the, obviously, that was the last wish episode um, based on the story Last Wish, uh, which is the first time technically they meet because um, technically before they met, but he didn't know who she was and she didn't know he who he was. Doesn't matter. Um, this is the first time they actually physically, like physically meet, and then they meet. They also physically meet. Wink, 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 wink. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. Say no more. Um, but yeah, it's it's just and all and and all. What we're trying to get at is the show's amazing, um, and I I don't know. I I cannot make my mind up if it's a hindering or a benefit of read the books beforehand, because there's certain things you pick up on. That are literally Easter eggs, air quotes. Yes, and that's like I was getting at. Yeah, that are cool for being in the in the know. Um, um, and uh, but then there's the story elements that you're missing, like you're missing out on that you know you're missing out on that kind of like frustrates you, but you know, like oh, obviously we don't have time to do the story elements or just all the way it. it's being told. Yeah, it's, like, it's slightly frustrating because. You know, you don't know if it's being done this way just as an artistic choice, yeah, or if it's being done this way because, well, you know, they're just doing their version of yeah the Witcher type thing. Because the the unlike um, the novels, the full length novels, uh, starting with Blood Blood of Elves, the first two collections of short stories, The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny, they have that time jump. That's what they do. Yeah, there's a narration done because in Last Wish it starts off with. Um, Dandelion, uh, Geralt, and Siri traveling yeah. in secret. Of course, everyone knows who Dandelion is because he's the most famous person, all of fucking noticeably by far, noticeably famous throughout the whole thing, um, all over the continent, which is fucking bizarre. Right. Because no one likes him, but everyone knows him. You know what I mean? It's like, you obviously, stick your dick in anything you possibly can. And he's poor as fuck in yeah, every all story. The time, every fucking time. He's like the most well-renowned bard. Yep, but famous. poor shit all the time. 
poor as shit yeah. and always running from somebody because he fucked something. Yeah. Um, it's just ridiculous. But um, so it's interesting because they took that element and put it in the in the show where there's snippets of the modern timeline, mm-hmm. the present, but it keeps reaching back to a different adventure that Geralt's on. So the only real true timeline you get is the last three well all of series because she's in present um the entire time uh in the last three episodes with Yennefer and Geralt yeah. are the only times that are in they're in the present timeline series is the present in the in the show in the series show. is literally the present timeline that's yep. happening and then it's Geralt and Yennefer that are catching up to her yeah. her timeline yep and it's literally not until the last I would say the last two episodes. It might be two episodes, yeah. Uh, that they they that those other two finally catch up with her. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's The Witcher on uh, the the old Netflix flicks. Um, I say check it out if you like fantasy stuff because um, it's definitely definitely fantasy. It's definitely fantasy. It's not going to be anything. Other than that, I can't really say it's going to be. Oh, it's going to no. reach new fans. No, if you're if you're a fan of fantasy, this is definitely what it's going to be at. Just be warned. I'm not going to say like, oh, that viewer discretion is advised. For yeah. This show. <laughs> oh my god. Um, the timeline is all screwy until you get to the last of the season, and then it makes sense. You just have to stick through it. You just have to stick through it because then all the what's happening will 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 turn into a cohesive story. Yeah. Because it's all building blocks to make this pyramid that is the the first season. Yeah, but that's my that's my opinion at least. And like I said earlier, it, you know, we talked a lot about the just the show in general, but the the casting is amazing. The the yeah. acting is absolutely amazing. I, I can't stress how how well uh, Henry Cavill did as as Geralt. Yeah. Um, I know I had a little bit of reservations to the when they first announced not not his acting ability just his looks yeah behind it you know they showed some pictures and stuff and you're like eh, it still kind of looks a little weird yeah but obviously but once they get to the actual show they they fucking nail it and he fucking nails it yeah. he's apparently a giant witcher nerd yeah who has played the games who has read the books uh the his voice work is spot on literally so taken from from the video games because he loved that so much and because that was such a, a well of anything of Geralt from any of the, the works done, uh, his voice work from the, the voice work done from the game is the most iconic for, for Geralt. And uh, he, he hits it. He hits it just right out of the yeah. park. It's amazing. Uh, how, how, um, how hard did you laugh when he dropped that first fuck? Oh, my God. It was so, so good. hard. It, yes. I just I giggled so much. So much. Just fuck. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, he said fuck. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, this is so well. That was like, I don't know why that hit me as being like the greatest thing they could possibly do because. Well, because tra- transitioning, because we, we probably should transition to the, another thing. Oh, now. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, transitioning uh, to uh, another uh, very near and dear uh, series to us, the, the Expanse. Yep. We got season four. Four. Yep. Yeah. Now and it's the first season on Amazon, and which God damn, means they just ramped everything up. Yeah, everything. And speaking of fucks, yeah, there were a lot given by Avasarla. Yeah, and the first time she says fuck in this series, I couldn't have been happier. In her first, literally her first scene on screen, like her first time she's on screen in the in this new season. She drops two of them right away. Yes, and I was like, "Finally, there, there is like she's the the actress for the role. I can't remember her name. Uh, it is so perfect for this character. She's such the embodiment of this character, and she's done so well in the first three seasons uh, of it. But there was always something missing because Avasarla of the books was a foul mouth asshole. There's no way I'm pronouncing that name. Uh." It's finally in season four where we where we break the bonds of fucking cable television that we actually get the the final piece of this character that was missing and her just just 
foul mouth nature is so amazing to hear and how much she just doesn't give a fuck oh yeah no and it's it's the first three seasons her character i'm not gonna say is hindered but but there's something missing there's this element to her character that's not the same she's still gruff and she's still angry and she's still an asshole yeah but but, there's just something missing there yeah it's just her the way she speaks yeah and it's like oh okay I see what you're doing here. And then you get to the fourth season and she fucking drops those and you're like, that's what it was. That's yes. exactly what it was. And just the sheer glee over my face. That yeah, it just dude. Happened. Like, I was like, they can butcher the rest of this fucking this season, but I'm already happy with what already they're doing. Happy. Exactly. I can't, I can't not be happy right now. Cause obviously I can finally just drop F bombs willy nilly whenever she wants. And she fucking, fucking does, does it. it. Oh, oh my God. Does she does it. Do it. Does it, does it do it? Does do it. it. Anyway. Does, does do it. Uh, beyond that, fan-fucking-tastic yeah. season. And like I said, they just ramp everything up. The The, the video quality is, is fantastic. The The environments they go to are so amazing. The The CG, I think, is even better than, than the previous seasons. Uh, they introduce so many fucking new characters uh, here. Uh, that makes sense in the books. I, I don't remember how much of the books are present here or like uh, how every little event occurs. The book? How close it is to the books is I, book what I should four, really Book four, it's pretty much in its entirety is there. Yeah. The only difference is none of the moons melt. That's And that I kept thinking that. I was like, there's something with the moons happening here. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. They the sped books. up the tidal wave too. Yeah. If the title it doesn't happen until the th- like the th- second or third moon melts mm-hmm. then whatever that machine is is they think it's an earthquake but it's uh it's actually coming the machine's coming out of the ground causing displacement moving water and ma- and, and land away from it causing the tidal wave to happen okay um but other than that i mean other you, like basically they nailed every major plot point in book four and then sprinkled in book five. Yes, and that I, I loved that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Just to be like, oh, we're introducing Marcos yeah. here. And, and Philip. That, and Philip. I was so excited. That I was was like, so, when oh they actually God. showed up on, yeah. on camera and you're like, oh. oh. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> He's actually here. We're doing season five right now? And then I find out they are. That's the reason That's, they're in it because... That is literally what season five yeah, is going to be. They, they literally are filming season five already, if not almost done with it. Ugh. Because they they needed to ramp it up, but they needed those characters. So they needed to, they decided to introduce them early, which is perfectly fine. With yeah. Me. It gives something that uh, you can cut away. You don't have to stick. Cause if I recall right, it pretty much stuck to just the events on new Terra or whatever else it was called. El- Ellis. Ellis at the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be able to, to pull back and be like, okay, well this is actually what's also happening with the OPA and try yep. to track down, uh, some of the the fringe elements of the, the OPA, pirates and everything, the pirates yeah. and everything. And then you're like, oh, okay, this is where you're introducing Marcos. Instead of just jumping into the next season, being like, you know, okay, this is our big bad guy for this season. You know, you're introducing him now, just so you can sprinkle in like this is things going forward type stuff. Yeah. Um. But uh, so 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 fantastically done. Yeah. This season, uh, I love the the character that they got to play Murtry. The guy that they got to play Murtry, just such a, such a oh burn burn uh, um, Gorman burn Gorman yeah yeah I fantastic love that fucking choice guy. oh my god he plays that character so fucking well yeah so well yep um, um yeah and they they didn't pull any of the punches that I thought they were gonna pull with like the whole relationship with Amos and uh, what's her face yeah and the just, fact that he's fucking guns are down yeah oh and my I was god like, okay yeah I don't think out of any other previous season there were more emotional events than than this season no not at all and especially leading up to the final episode was it the second to last or the or the last episode where uh where what's his name gets airlocked gets uh oh it's the last episode yeah it was the last episode yeah, cause start, yeah. Yeah. Philip. oh yeah that, in fact that was the last scene wasn't it yeah because yeah. philip's like boop yeah uh and that like i had jesus christ man that was rough yeah that was rough to watch. Yeah, I was like, 
I'm not okay with any of this all of a sudden. No. Like, I knew this was coming, but I was like, But still, like, to be Jesus. able to just to, to watch it happen right yeah. now, and that's the way you end the season. Because uh, I thought they were going to end the season quite differently. Yeah. Obviously, Avasarla loses the election yep. for uh, president of Earth. Yeah. Uh, and she's sitting there up on on Mar or on, on uh, Luna, the moon, the moon. Yeah. Watching down on Earth, and I'm just sitting there going, "Is this where they're going to end it? Oh my God, are they going to end it with the asteroids hitting? Spoiler with the asteroids hitting Earth. Yeah. Is that where? Oh my God, no, they no. didn't. I was like, oh. And the crazy thing too is like. Knowing obviously we you know it's gonna happen. Joe just explained it. Um but knowing that because she's been disposed of power now, um like the she's not gonna know it's happening. Yeah. Like she does she's literally gonna be in, on Luna, uh away from her husband, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she's gonna be able to witness the at least the first asteroid hit. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is savage. Savage. She's going to watch it. And, yeah. And you're right. Her husband's still on Earth. And it's like. And her kids. And her kids. Yeah. Well, one of them's dead. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. But it's but. like she's literally about to lose everything. Yeah. Because about by the time the first rock hits, Amos should already be on Earth, right? Yeah. Because it, 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 the book five, is it? Yeah. yeah. Starts with him. They've they've all gone on vacation, so they've all kind of split yeah. up. And Amos, uh, which was another thing I was going to point out, it was really cool to see that uh, Peaches yeah. that makes the that makes yeah. an appearance, makes you know, the video call, makes the video call in this one, and so that is definitely leading up to showing that she's in jail right now, and it's going to lead up to season five where he goes to visit her, and so he's on he's on Earth. Yeah, when the first strike happens. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because that's why he survives because he's in the he's prison in the, underneath that uh, ginormous bunker of a prison. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how the that's how Clar- Clarissa gets out as well. Yeah, and, and they he out. sneaks her on board of uh, the Rossi. Well, he sneaks her on board a shuttle to Luna, yeah. which then he gets it's on, on the and then he finds out that Naomi and Alex have both gone out. Yeah, um, Naomi goes after her kid Philip, and yeah, and Amo, or not Amos. Uh, Alex is going back to Mars to try and reconnect with his uh, his family yeah. there. Yeah. Which is, I wonder if that's, you think when that, is that when Bobby's going to join up? Or is she going to be with, are they going to do the whole Alvis and her? I think they're going to do the whole Alvis and her because they already set that up yeah, at, the, okay. at the end of the, at, at the end of that episode, you know, you have uh, the, the scene that I thought that, that the asteroids were going to happen. Oh, and he, she, she makes the call? She makes the call and, you know, she, she says, Bobby, you're late, you know, as late as ever or something like that. Uh, never, uh, Always late or something like yeah. that. I can't remember what what the quote was, but because yeah, she's so, no longer in power. So yeah. obviously, you know, she's gonna and she's gonna end up back in power, and she's gonna call back Bobby. You know, yeah, because what's her face is gonna get fucking smushed, smushed by a rock. Fucking smushed. Yes. <laughs> like literally, like New York, which is the capital of the human race on Earth at that point, because the main capital is actually on Luna. Um, literally, is ground zero. Yeah, and it just gets completely and utterly destroyed because a giant asteroid. Hits the middle of it, and that's like the first one because they literally have five of them yeah. lined up to hit. Yeah, because the the one of the last ones is hits where Holden grew up. Yeah, because he's talking to his family. Yeah, um, well for a little bit, and then no one can talk to anybody because well communications have gone down. Yeah, but yeah. So like it's just it's interesting because she's out of power because she lost the election, and then months later, <laughs> New York and everyone gets fucking flattened and they're like uh we don't know what to do please help us yes exactly and she's like oh let me fix my sorry yeah right yeah uh so uh, season four there's there's just nothing left to be said about it it's just absolutely fantastic uh of of a season just more of everything that you get in seasons one two one two and three and all the extra stuff that you get because you can do this on uh a streaming platform so you get a solid hour of just greatness yeah. uh didn't mention it during the witcher should mention it right now uh, as well a, a lot of these watching these episodes were just like it in the first 30 minutes uh, there were many times that i would sit i was sitting there just going like oh my god has an hour passed already and you know, i look at my watch and i'm like it's only been 30 minutes that's fantastic yeah there's just so 
much in these episodes that even just a half an hour of episode feels like a full hour of episode. Yeah. And you just get more of it. Yeah, I could have swore that first episode of The Expanse was like an hour and a half long. Yeah. I was like, how long are we watching this? Oh, it's 40 minutes and I have another 20. I was like, yeah. So, so much, much has fucking gone on in this episode. And I love it. I don't feel like I have to watch another episode. Just so much is happening right I now. I did. I watched like... Oh, no. Like... Burned through so many. Even with The Witcher and, and definitely with The Expanse, it was uh, it was very hard to to be like, well, I have nothing else going on right now, so another episode it is. Just let it go. Might and, as and well. This is coming from the person that's like... Trying to stretch things out. Like, yeah. I stretched it out. I didn't watch it in a couple of days. I watched it in a, in a week, uh, I think it was. But still, it's like, still could have stretched out a little bit more. I literally watched both in, both of them. I finished in two days. Yeah, and, and for me, it was it was a week. For both yeah, of them. I was like, I even said to you, I was like, God, I wish I had willpower. Yeah. <laughs> I have a little bit more. It's like, when, like with Dracula. Dracula's three one and a half hour long movies, essentially. Yeah hour and a half long episodes and like I get done with episode two and that ending and I was like I know it's almost 1230 at night and I know I have to be up in like less than eight hours but I really 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 want to watch this this. yeah that's no have there been shorter episodes you probably could have definitely done it but uh, an hour and a half is hard to watch yeah, it's uh, just in it's, general. It very much feels like I have to set time aside a time to watch it, yeah. rather than just oh, it, it's on. Yeah, like that's the thing. Is like when we were talking about last night, you can watch. Like for some reason, it's easier to watch two episodes that are an hour long each than it is an hour long movie, an hour and a half long movie, because you have that. Oh, first episode's over. I'm gonna stop it. Do whatever I need to do. Cook dinner. Go to the bathroom. Whatever it is. But, like, I don't like to pause things. Right. I hardly do either. So I'm like, it's much easier to do what I need to do after an hour of television, watch another hour of television, do something else, watch another hour. So I'll burn through four hours of TV Mm -hmm. easily when I can stop in between episodes because I can look at it like, oh, I have 10 minutes left. Yes. Cool. It's over. Stop. Pee. Get drink. Back. Episode. But an hour and a half long movie, you're like, and I did that hour and a half long went through, realized it's 1030, like almost 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, or it was actually, I think it was almost 1030 at night. And I was like, shit, I haven't, made, I haven't made dinner. Yeah. So I was like, fuck. fuck. So I made dinner. And now you can't watch another episode because so it's I did. another. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fair enough. You could do that. Yeah. So I was like, I really want to see what happens next. Cause like see episode one ends on a cliffhanger episode two is literally a cliffhanger. Yeah. And it's like, you get to the end and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? And I can just, I'm dying to watch episode three. Yeah. And I should have done it yesterday, but I was doing, I was doing all these other stuff and I was like, I can't, I don't have an hour and a half of solid time to fucking watch this movie. Mm hmm. It makes me mad, but I was like, I want to, oh God, it's so good. And I love that guy. He's so good. And we'll talk about that another time. Talk about that another time. But uh, speaking of a show that had to rein you in, (sighs) The Watchmen. God damn it. I'm so, I'm still so upset at this fucking show. Really? Because of how good it was. Oh yeah. And the fuck that had to, like, it made me, it, I mean, it didn't make me wait. I literally had, I had no other choice other than to wait week to week to watch it. Mm Mm-hmm. And like, it was so, it was so well done, and it was so good that I could, I could have easily watched all nine of those episodes in a day. Easily, if this were on a streaming service, yeah, this was definitely a bingeable show for you. Yeah. This would definitely be another show that I would have been like, it took me a week to watch because yeah. I could, I space things out a little bit more. But I would have, I just, I would have destroyed it in a day, and I'm like, easily. And so in a way, the reason I'm upset at it is because it made me realize that that for certain shows, that's a cool thing to be able to do, like mm-hmm. to have that pacing. But it just made me mad because I wanted to watch it. Because it was definitely one of those things that we've talked about before where like every week we're at wing night, just like, did you watch the episode? Yeah. This happened. What do you think happened? What what, what do you think this was? Yeah. And you, like just being able to speculate and to try and guess. And I was wrong on such, everything. 
I think for the most part, every, everybody was. And so, like, I was like, no. And it's like, I'm, I mean, obviously they wrote it the way that they did it, but I was like, every little bit I theorized was going to happen was completely and utterly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that, like, they, the last two episodes, they tell you exactly how wrong you were. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. It was you're right like, in fucking front of yeah, you like, this whole entire fuck. Time. Like off. even to the point where like because we actually we we obviously have Osmandius on that uh, that different dimension type world thing that at the beginning of the season you're like you know why is he there what's he doing there who put him there type of thing and I know towards the beginning I was like oh uh, what's her name did it the uh, uh, fuck what was her Lady name? Truth Lady uh, Lady is that what Lady Lady True Lady Truth right Lady True Lady Truth Lady True True Lady, True yeah, yeah Lady True. Truth was like that's a little bit superhero name for me no lady true uh the no, true indices i was like she put him there she's you know uh got uh, uh all of his uh you know his inventions she bought out his company i mean why else would she have a giant gold statue of him sitting? bro fuck it is him bro she brought him back from the place that dr manhattan put him because he wanted to be there yep he's didn't just like Manhattan always does, you don't get what you wish for. Very much like a genie. You yeah. wished for something that you thought was perfect, but because you didn't specify every yeah. little detail. Like it wasn't, yeah. He yeah. he gave you exactly what you wanted, but. You didn't realize that's not exactly what yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's a lot of things like that. And then just finding out that, you know, the, the, uh, the. Or the, the seventh cavalry was just basically a, just a fucking made up thing the whole entire time. I mean, yeah. the, the 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 people within it were real and really believed it, but the, like the higher ups were just like, yeah, this is just like we just, we needed a, 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 a mode to get this done, and so we just made this racist faction of yeah. Like when they they were still racist. Yeah, like, oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they, yeah. Like the but was that, the order of the Cyclops or, or whatever yeah. it was that uh, the version or the uh, um, not version but the uh, uh, piece of the the Klux. Ku Klux Klan from the from that timeline, uh, yeah, but worse, but like, worse, definitely fucking worse. Like I, I mean, I don't know all about uh, the Ku Klux Klan, but I do know that the Cy- the Order of the Cyclops were fucking monsters. But uh, the fact that they were just using white people as well because uh, that's yep. all they wanted, they just more power yeah. for themselves. And it's like it's they were using the they were using racists which is a funny way to put it using racist they're using racists to further a goal for rich racists yes for rich and powerful racists and i was like that's exactly what would happen yeah like right? if if like this could be a thing like this is so real you know what i mean i'm like uh all right it hurts to know like that's a like that's it's a, so real it's right? like this could be a thing Right. Obviously, they're not creating a machine to suck the life force out of a, a, of a, a, god. a god. But, I mean, still, like, god damn it. Yeah. It's so well done. But all the, the setup from fucking episode one to wrap up on a fucking egg was so maddening to me. Not even just to wrap up on the egg. Literally, the remember this. Yeah. yeah, and then she's like, you know, put, like you said, you or like you were getting at, piecing everything together, like, oh, he can put his, he, he thinks he he has the power to be able to just put his power into, like, an egg. Yeah. And whoever eats that egg now has his power. And, you know, walking on water, you're, you're supposed to remember this. And then she's literally stepping out. And, and I was like, oh, well, so I'm not going to be able to see if the top falls over? Exactly. Fuck you, Christopher Nolan. Exactly. Damon Lindelof, you fuck. Um, yeah, it's just because, like, the first time you see Angela Abar, she cracks an egg into a bowl, mm-hmm. makes a smiley face, has the blood droplet on it, yep. mixes it up, right? The last scene you see in the show, Angela Abar with a fucking egg, and you hear it, you, you, you see her eat it, and you're like, okay. And she's going to test the power yep. by walking on water. And I was like, and go fuck yourself. yourself. Seriously. Ugh. And I'm so happy with it. I don't want there to be more no because it was a perfect story in and of itself yeah it had so many emotional moments like i didn't even i didn't think they would actually kill dr manhattan well i mean technically speaking if it worked he didn't die 
Yeah, but it, but yeah, I was still getting it. Like fucking shocked. Like even from uh, Lady True's perspective, like that up until the final episode, it was like they're trying to save Doctor Manhattan. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. You know, when you find out about her ultimate plan, it's like, oh, we're trying to save Doctor Manhattan, and then, and then you find, find out. out that she's actually trying to save him for herself. Yeah. For to do the exact same thing. Yep. It's like Jesus Christ! You people are evil, yeah, evil, and it just it just plays so well because that's the same thing you find out in the book. So books, um, yeah. that's exactly what it is. This, it's the saying: uh, "Power corrupts absolute power. Absolute power absolutely corrupts. corrupts. Yeah, right, or corrupts, corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and that's exactly what happens in the first one. Ozymandias has found a way to have absolute power." Mm-hmm. And he is completely and utterly corrupted by it. Yes. In in his mind, he's not. Obviously, every great villain is. Yeah. You know, thinks that they're doing right. Exactly. In this, they literally make. They literally tell you, "No, I am trying to save humanity. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to save mankind." And what's it end up being? No, she wants the power to be a god. Yep. Because she wants that power, but it's like, yeah, but look what happened last time. Right. Doctor Manhattan was the exception to the rule. Yeah. He had all the power, but he, the, the fact that the power gave him the ability to see any action he would do, he knew the consequences and mm-hmm. knew that he had to remove himself because yeah. he is now that absolute power that's obtainable, right? Yeah. And he knew that, oh, this is what it is. And the then they explain to you, he knows that, he knows something's wrong because there's this blank space and then there's nothing. Yeah. Because he knows that he's going to die, but he doesn't know what's because he dies. He doesn't know what, what happens, what happens afterwards. Right. Yeah. So he can't even do it. Like he can't even save himself because he doesn't know how he dies. He just knows he does die. Yeah. And it, when he's, when you tell him, when he tells you this, you're like, it's bullshit. Like how's going to, how are they going to kill you? And it's like, Oh, they don't. They just reuse the energy that is you. I was like, motherfuckers. So smart. So smart. Such a well done show. <sighs> uh, didn't think that they would uh, sling Blue Wang, but they did. I mean, yeah. Good on them. I mean, that's literally in the comic books. So yeah, like they stayed true to it they all. They stayed true to it all, literally. Um, the the graphicness of, of his reveal, too, was, was just horrifying. Oof, man. The, the noises that Hammer makes as, it, as uh, Angela just. Bashes his fucking bashes skull in, like and like the awkwardness of it. Like, baby, we've we've talked about this. Yeah, they're coming after you, and he's just like innocent as fuck. Just like what, 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 what's going on? What do you do yeah. with that hammer? Oh my god. Um, and I did like the fact that they they didn't show you his face until he took the form right. of Cal. And I was like, "That's actually really clever." It's really clever because he literally, it, it literally could be, it, it literally is Doctor Manhattan from his yep. original form. Now it's just, it is the actor who's yeah. playing him. So because he have took to, the form of Cal, it's too, and, you know? it's too much. Going, oh, spoiler, that's Cal. Yeah. If they did that at the beginning, now it's just, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, all right, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, nine episodes of fucking genius. It's yep. just. Every bit of it in every fucking episode, you and I would just be frustrated as shit because we're like, we just want to know what the fuck is going on, what's happening because no answers were given. And the answers they did give you were just a fucking question in the form of an answer. Yes. And I'm like, you can't answer a fucking question with a fucking question. Nope. But you did for eight fucking, I would say seven episodes really because eight, they gave you a lot of answers but not the answers you fucking wanted. No. And then what do they do in episode nine? Give you all the goddamn answers except for one. What the fuck happens? Does she stand on water? Yes. Right. Because there's like there's people like saying like she should have been glowing blue. I'm like no. no. He glue he glowed blue because his body was reconstructed from energy. Yeah. She wasn't gonna have that. It's a transfer of his powers. Not, yeah, not not literally a transfer of his makeup, his atomic makeup. Yeah, and that's why he went from being blue to being Cal's normal body when the ring was put in, because that ring was blocking the power. Yeah, so it made him real. Mm-hmm. I was like, 
I just want to know this. And Damon's not telling anybody. Yeah. He's like, of no. course he's not. He's like, that's not that's how good it works. Storytelling. Like, that's, you fuck. That's great. Fantastic storytelling. You can't, if you can you can't give me a that, dunk, a can, dump truck full of crack and tell me I'm not going to have more at the end. Yes. You just can. Cause I'll be addicted as shit after doing a whole dump truck full of crack. But now I, I literally can't go anywhere to get more. Yep. I might as well just burn the planet. Because there's no coming back, motherfucker. I think it's absolutely awesome. The storytelling in this in the, this series was was fan fucking tastic. Yeah. Especially finding out the actual identity the identity of the original, uh, uh, fuck, who did justice? Yeah, that storyline there was <sighs> so good, was so fucking good. With Angela taking his uh, what what ends up being her grandfather's yeah grandfather's yeah. Uh, what they call that stuff? Or mem- oh, the um, wherever those pills were. Yeah, that basically are are his memories stored so that she can learn about uh, who her great grandfather was, or who nostalgia. her grandfather nostalgia. Who her grandfather was. You find out had that he uh, is the original hooded, hooded justice, who uh, everyone thought was white. Who everyone thought was white, and you get to see his uh, where he comes from, why he he did it. Uh, fantastically told uh, in like a sepia tone type of way, very uh, art- artistically uh, uh, told, with splices in of obviously Angela is experiencing it through his point of view. So you get the different actor playing the young, uh, the young uh, grandfather, but then you get her literally in it as well, playing certain scenes. Yeah, so that and episode, asking the God questions damn it. And, and you get the back and forth uh, between that, and uh, it's it's so it's so well done, so fucking well done. It's probably one of my more favorite uh, parts of the season. Uh, was were those were those episodes? Yeah, the that one, the nostalgia episode when she fully goes through the 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 withdrawal or the the sequences, and the Doctor Manhattan and Angela Abar episode where you get Angela's backstory is devastatingly amazing because mm-hmm. there's so much emotion in both those episodes. So much. that, But they're so fucking well done. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah. 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 And then just, I always come back to that fucking reveal that Ozymandias has been on Earth for a, we don't even know how long, just been a while. It, it it had to have been a while because she's using more conventional uh, rocket technology yeah. to, like, to get out there and then to come back. Like so, he's been frozen in gold yeah, for so. so fucking long until her great reveal, where you find out that she's his daughter. Yeah, and the only reason she thought him out is to show him that, that he's better. That she's she's done what he wanted to do exactly. And I was like. That is your daughter. She's a narcissist just like you. Yep. A dangerous, smart, fucking narcissist. And it's cool that he realizes that. And yeah. he's like, oh, fuck. I yeah. was kind of a dick and an asshole. Yeah. You know, and he's a like, narcissist. yeah, he's like, oh. Because he, obviously he learned that when he was on uh, Europa. Yeah. And then when he gets back, he's like, oh, yeah, no, that she's definitely, she's my, kid. definitely my kid. Something needs to happen. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, yikes. Yikes. Uh, and then it, it just, uh, that whole fucking setup is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. She just injects it right into her right there. And I was like, another scene where it's just like, I never would have thought I've seen on, on television. Yeah. Like just you've always hear like, full on, Oh, you just, just, like, just uh, took a fucking syringe and just ejected semen directly into her vagina. And I was like, yeah, holy shit. Yeah. Fuck you, Adrian. I was like, wow. wow. Right. Like only HBO would do that, right? Like, like, I mean, maybe given Netflix, that liberty, but yeah, but like, pretty damn close of like cable networks. Like, HBO is like we don't give a fuck. Yeah, HBO of a cable new of a cable network is the only one that would probably do. Yeah, that. we like we just see don't. Showtime, Cinemax, or anything yeah. like that doing that. Um, yeah, just I don't know. It was so ridiculous. Um, and. It's just so good. I just, I want, I want more, but I don't want more of that. I like the way that ended. I just want more in that world. You want more stories within that world. Yeah, I want more Watchmen in that world. They can leave 
They can leave Angela out of it. They can leave Angela completely out of it. And this would just be a totally different story. This yeah. could literally be... Hell, I'd, I'd be satisfied uh, with just learning more about uh, uh, Silk Spectre 2. You know, obviously, I, I, I can't remember her actual name, but Lori. like joining the FBI yeah. and all the stuff that she's gone through there. Yeah. Becoming a cynical asshole, which she was a her fantastic... Her father, basically. Well, her father, basically, but, you know... Uh, it was a fantastic character. Oh, so well done. Uh, but seeing her putting a stop to all of these masked vigilantes. Yeah. You know, because we get a taste of that. But obviously it's not the first time that's happened. Yeah, clearly. Uh, so if you want to build something off of this, you could definitely do her. Or you can just do something totally different. Yeah, like I just want more in that world because it's so well done. It's got, um, a, it's got an interesting history behind it. It's not yeah. just a. It's not just our world, but... Slightly different, yeah. type thing. It's a very different world yep. than ours. Yeah, and it's just, I just, I love what they did with it. Ma- obviously making it modern day, which is fucking mind-blowing to me. I was like, you did what? It's when? It's yeah. ni- 2019? Yeah. Oh, shit. Like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Because I literally thought, okay, you're going to do it, like, in the 80s. You're going to do it in the 90s. Nah, bitch. We're gonna nah. fast forward this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're gonna go and give you forty years. We're gonna top, you know, throw it on top. It's like, God damn. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would super love to see the 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 literal transition from being trying to be this altruistic good person to being her father. Yeah. Because like you can see that's exactly where she was at. Yeah. And I was like, that right there is so well done because and thinking back to it and the thought of it when you said something a minute ago we should have not knowing that Lady True was Adrian Voigt's daughter but knowing at the end you're like oh they literally told us that you are you you have the opportunity to be your parent yeah and it's like Lori is yeah like Lori is her is a cynical Bad joke telling, violent, mm-hmm. sexually aggressive human being. Yep. Her father was a violent, bad joke telling, aggress- sexually aggressive, violent human being. It's yep. like she is her father. Yeah. And so is Lady True. Yeah. So much so that she brought her own mother back to life. Yeah. In convinced everyone that it was her daughter yeah and i was like jesus christ what is wrong with you seriously because it's, it's cause exact i was like it's because she could maybe she's just a narcissist of it yeah i was like god damn it like so cyclical and this has made sense and it's like you when you get to the end and you realize that you you tell like every little bit like I think it was said on on Damon said it on the Watchmen podcast, which you can watch if, if you have uh, if you listen to the podcast anywhere, which obviously you do because you listen to this. Uh, you can there's two episodes. It goes over episodes one through four. No, I'm sorry, three episodes: one through three, four through six, and seven through nine uh, will be them. And I believe it's in the third episode they're talking about seven, eight, nine when he says. We literally told everybody everything, but you just didn't know it because we didn't give you all the details. And I was like, yeah, you didn't give a shit. Yeah, right? Except for well-written goddamn drama, you right. motherfuckers. But anyways, uh, that's it for this week's episode of uh, 2019 television wrap-up. We did three things, but three, things. Um, three amazing things that we enjoyed without Mike because Mike didn't watch any of it. Nope. Um, two episodes of Witchers and Count, so he didn't do any of it. Nope. Uh, plus, he's never watched any of The Expanse. Nope. And he's Red Watchman. He's Red right? Watchman. Yeah, yeah, he's Red Watchman. Um, anyways, but that's it for this week's episode, everybody. Uh, comes at you. We are Joe. Joe's Backpack and myself, Cody. And that's it for this week's episode. Like I said, and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally.